Hello model car fans, welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rao, and this week I wanted to feature a build here of a 64 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt, which if you guys are familiar with this car, and I'm sure many of you are, uh, not really a production car. It's based on the Fairlane uh, two-door sedan, Fairlane 500, I believe. Um, it was heavily modified to go racing. Ford actually produced 100 of these uh, 49 manuals and 51 automatics is what I read. Uh, they did a lot of modifications to make this car uh, very competitive, and I mean very competitive. And they went they went racing, and after having the 63 lightweights already, um, which were, they were lightweight, but they weren't very lightweight, and uh, they were getting creamed, basically. The Mopar guys were just cleaning up shop, and, and Chevys just really weren't all that competitive at the time. Chevy was officially out of racing, even the band, a, a lot of things going on at the drag strip. Ford had uh, commissioned this one to get built, and you know, a car that was never designed to have the 427 in it, this thing was um, uh, built, and, and Ford had crammed those 427 high-rise dual quad with Holly carburetors that they had had in the Galaxy and uh, uh, did some NASCAR racing with as well. It was rated at uh, 425 horsepower and 480 foot-pounds of torque. Considered very conservative, considering uh, many reports say the engine made actually close to 600 horsepower. And it was a side oiler, if, if you know what that is. And the 427s, they um, had top oilers and side oilers. And the oil actually, part of the problem with some of the high winding motors, and they found that out when they were racing them, um, in different classes, especially in uh, Le Mans and whatnot, that uh, at the higher RPMs, the engine mains were starved. So the side oiler, they put uh, the priority main, the priority oiling to oil the main, the crankshaft first, and then the top end. Um, so that's what the side oilers are. Very, very desirable uh, engine and uh, legendary at this point. But they took the Fairlane. And they created the Thunderbolt, which was the nickname for the 63 uh, Fairlane uh, Thunderbolt uh, concept, I believe it was. But to lighten it, they went with fiberglass doors, fiberglass hood, front fender. And even the early cars had fiberglass front bumpers, but the later cars had aluminum front bumpers. So that's why I painted this front bumper aluminum or silver instead of chrome. But I left the rear one chrome. And I understand the trunk lids were steel as they wanted the weight on the back but not on the front. So these things were very competitive and they also went with plexiglass uh, side windows. But I guess the windshield stayed um, regular. And then of course the signature teardrop hood which these things are known for. But it appeared on other cars but they were definitely put on these. And pinned in the front. Also um, racing equipment included the headers but it included since it was considered a stock car it has headers, and Ravel did a good job with this, but it runs an exhaust system, a single exhaust system. So in the factory class, it had to have an exhaust system. So that's why there is a single exhaust system coming off. But, I mean, you're not even uncorking these. You could plug these and run the exhaust through theirs, but they did not intend or design that um, for that. So it was strictly a purpose-built race car. Uh, they did some other weight-saving measures as well, removing the sun visors, radio heater wheel covers passenger side wiper arm which i left on the on the build so all, all of my thunderbolts happen to have the passenger side wiper but i could easily pull it off but um it's there so while it's technically a street legal car this thing was not very drivable on a street the four speed cars got 457 gears in the uh, nine inch and automatics got uh, 444 gears so definitely not a practical car for the street uh, and it was not built on the assembly line. They were sent out to Dearborn Steel Tubing, and they did all the modifications because there was a lot of modifications that were required under the hood to get this engine to fit. So all of the front suspension had to be modified and the shock towers and everything to get that engine and the headers to fit, And which is also why the teardrop hood um, was necessary as well to clear that engine. They were done in roughly three batches. The first 11 cars, which was the first batch, were painted vintage burgundy, while the rest of the cars were painted in Wimbledon white. So most of the ones that have, you see built are the early, the legendary cars, the first 11, and 
the Russ Davis Ford is actually no exception. It was a burgundy car because it was one of the first. It's actually the earliest um, known Thunderbolt as far as VIN numbers go. Burgundy, the first 11, but all the rest of them are white. And uh, I, I plan to do some more of these even though I, I love this car. Uh, wonderful, you know, just great history and, and, and did a great job. So these things were terrors on a strip. But to me, it's kind of interesting that they went so far as to keep the 500 trim on it. And they took the 289 emblems on, but they really did put the 427 emblems on the fender. They wanted you to know that that engine came on there. And since they actually built 100 of them, they didn't have to race in the experimental class. They were considered actual stock drag cars um, racing in the stock class. But uh, that game became harder and harder to do. But being that, here's something I thought was interesting. And I've seen it on some of the other cars. Before put uh, a plaque... Uh, riveted to the glove box, I believe, with the disclaimer. So they wanted the people who bought these, even though it was really hard to buy one of these, but they wanted the people to know that bought them that this was not your normal Ford. So I'm going to read this. This is what the plate actually says. This vehicle has been built specifically as a lightweight competitive car and includes certain fiberglass and aluminum components. Because of the specialized purpose for which this car has been built, and in order to achieve maximum weight reduction, normal quality standards of the Ford Motor Company in terms of exterior panel fit and surface appearance are not met on this vehicle. This information is included on this vehicle to assure that all customers who purchase this car are aware of the deviation from the regular high appearance quality standards of the Ford Motor Company. Kind of a neat little sticker, but uh, Mopar did it too when they made some of their super stock cars. And it even had a sticker that said the warranty uh, was not uh, uh, included when you bought that car. I don't really know about the warranty on this car, if it carried a warranty or if the guys who bought these or were given these cars um, knew that. But on to the, the actual car here. And, and I built this from a Revell kit. And it's mostly right out of the box. When it came to this particular one... Um, Ravel came out with the, the Hot Rod Series kits and they had this one and I bought this one early on. Um, this is not my original build. This is a much later build. But I really enjoyed building it. And uh, I craved to find the other Hot Rod kit, but I couldn't find it. And for many years I, I wasn't able to get it because it was burgundy and gold. And I thought that one looked really good. And I, I hadn't found it and uh, up until... You know much later but when these were first came out in the 90s I, I had bought this kit I was able to find this one and I knew about the other one but it, it dried up and I didn't know where else to find it so it wasn't until when I got back into the hobby in the 2000s and eBay that I was able to buy that kit and build that one so I've got actually four of these built but this is the one I built as a kid and I remember building it as a well a teenager really not a kid but I painted it red. Now this car, Russ Davis Ford, painted it uh, poppy red. But as you can see on here, poppy red is really more of an orange color. It's really not red. So when I built this one, I painted it poppy red and I used a uh, champagne gold to get the interior color, and uh, which looks really good. And the car has a black rubber floor mat, so I painted the floor black. My original build, I painted it just red, and the entire interior was gray. And uh, I'll post photos of it, because that one, I still have photos from when I took photos of it, but I don't remember what happened to it. I do know that when I built this one, um, I did not rebuild my original build, but I don't remember what happened to it, whether it got torn apart for parts, or it had gotten broken. And it may be one of the ones that I attempted to strip, but messed up, because I didn't know how to strip paint at the time. But, so this one, the entire interior is done in champagne silver and is much more accurate. I did it as the four speed. The Revell kit you can build as the automatic or the stick, but just about all the decals that Revell gives you, like the gas around the car was a stick from what I remember reading. Um, and most of them, and many of the Thunderbirds were actually converted from automatic to stick because the stick was more competitive than the Lincoln sourced automatic they put in these. But, um... And I remember I broke the front suspension on the original build, and I think something else got broken. The mirror wipers got lost. And uh, so when I wanted to redo it and do it right, 
I, I got I got another kit and I built it painted it poppy orange and uh, did the interior correctly and I also painted the engine black on this one which is correct for a 64 427's the motors were black in 64 so my original build the motor was blue because I thought all Ford engines were blue at the time and I didn't really go to town detailing this one uh, left the pumpkin black I just blacked out the entire underside but um, don't really know on the race cars because they were all heavily modified um, and migrated so I don't know what Dearborn steel over tubing did under there so all of this rear suspension is modified by them the axles narrowed bigger wheels and you know barely fit in there and then the whole front suspension is heavily modified as well but Ravel as far as I know and know of this car they did a great job duplicating this this car I mean it's pretty accurate from what I understand I only did a few little tweaks to it right here I cut those out that's actually metal mesh screen I didn't do the greatest job on this one and then I also punched out metal mesh screen for these headlights because Ravel gives you clear ones with the mesh pattern on it but the real car they don't use these inner headlights they actually have ducts that go to the air cleaner which is replicated in this so let me get this hood off which is a little difficult to get here we go so there's the hood and I blacked out the underside and you can kind of see my work right there as far as the screen and thinning the plastic out because it's pretty thick there but here's the very unique Thunderbolt air cleaner for the 427 and there's the motor and it's a beautiful motor there's no wires I didn't do any extra detail on it um, don't remember where that decal came from because I don't think that's from the original set of decals but they have the 640 there and um, the rest of the decals and then headers by Doug Russ Davis Ford but beautiful car and the real car still exists too um, to this day but when it came to uh, Gas Ronda he was doing some racing and he had done a 62 Galaxy you know with a 406 and um, but he changed over to a 63 Galaxy 427, which was one of the quickest and fastest, but it wasn't quite good enough. And then in 64, he had taken a job with Russ Davis Ford, which got his connection here. And um, it wasn't shortly after that that he was racing the Thunderbolt. And he faced Butch Leal's Thunderbolt in the final round in 64 Winter Nationals and won with an 11.78 second, 123 uh, mile an hour run which also gave him the top stock crown that year so he won um, the class in a 427 Fairlane which uh, I didn't know that at the time when I built um, this particular car originally and didn't really know much about gas Ronda I knew he raced other cars I was more familiar with the other ones that have been replicated but uh, as far as the kit goes I really enjoy these and uh, they're a little finicky part is getting some of the parts to fit especially the suspension but it, it's it's just a wonderful kit and if you haven't built one of these you, you really have to and um, Ravel has released them many times with many different decals and I think and recently is another one that you can build kind of stock looking but not really and they even give you I mentioned that Ravel gives you an automatic and a manual tranny so you have both tranny options and they give you like three sets of wheels. There's two sets of chrome wheels and one set of steel wheels. So you got many different options you can do when you build this car uh, and replicate. And you can change them up too. You can have one style wheel on the front, a different style wheel on the back, which happened a lot of those times because they just raced them and whatever tires were available. And um, put some steel ones on the back. But on my builds, I pretty much matched the wheels but changed them all up. But I'll, I'll show you some of my other Thunderbolts because I have four more built. And, or not four more, I have three more built, um, this one being number four, and then I've got two more planned, so I will be building at least two more Thunderbolts, but um, like I mentioned, it's just a car that, I, I love the history on, on this car and, and what it represents, and one of the first few factory built, actually probably is the first factory built drag car of a, a mid-sized car, all the rest of them are full size at this point, and they were lightweights, the closest is when Mopar started their max wedges and they got a little bit smaller. So I guess you can call some of the max wedges, but they weren't really purpose built drag cars, not like the Thunderbolt. You couldn't just go into Ford as far as I know and buy this. 
um, you really had to know somebody. Just a car I really admire, especially at that point in time where Ford was just striking lightning. They were just about to come out with the Mustang, and that was going to strike uh, gold, and they didn't know it yet, but um, that really took off for them. And, and this car, as far as what it did on the drag strip for Ford's reputation, just, just amazing. And the engineering that went into the suspension on this car, because when you see these cars actually launch in their stock form, um, it, it's pretty amazing. But uh, uh, I probably rambled on enough on this one. But so I appreciate uh, you guys that uh, you know watching and subscribing and and all of your comments. I really appreciate it. And uh, you guys, you have a wonderful day and uh, build on. And I will see you next Saturday.